All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO gym, and the QBO gym is a place where we have numerous exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month we come out with new exercises for you to practice your skills and we break it down for you into four different sections. Today we're going to be working in the December cool down section. At the top here is a little animated video to share with you what you're going to be doing for Craig this month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive quiz that will help test your knowledge as it does relate to the video up above. Further down are all of the exercises within this section. And then at the bottom here, after you've completed all of the exercises in this section, we have some sample posts that you can use on LinkedIn to share with everybody what you have learned so far. So let's dive right into today's exercise where we are going to practice reconciling the checking account. Go ahead and click on that link to have the exercise up pop up for you. Now I already have it pulled up here on the right hand side. So let's see what we're gonna be doing today. As a bookkeeper, your primary responsibility is to ensure that all financial transactions are correctly categorized and match the flow of money into and out of the bank. You have just received the monthly statement from Craig's bank. Now it's time to confirm that all the transactions have been correctly added to and categorized in QuickBooks Online. So to complete this exercise, we need to grab a copy of Craig's bank statement. Click on the link beneath the cool down video to grab a copy. So here I am back in the gym. I'm going to scroll back to the top. Here is that animated video. And then there is this uh, button here that says bank statement. Go ahead and click on that to download it. And when you do, you can go ahead and open it up to see the bank statement that we are going to be working with for this exercise. Now we're going to be working in the advanced sample company and this exercise specifically does not require the uh, QBO advanced sample company, but since we're going to be using this version for all of the exercises in this section, that is the type of site sample company that we want to work in. If you have your own free QBOA account, um, you know that you can always get into the sample company that way, but for the QBO advanced sample company, we need to use a special link. And by the way, if you don't know how to get your own free QBOA account, make sure you click on the link below in the description. As a note here, you need to be completely logged out of your own QBO, QBOA account prior to opening the advanced sample company, or it's just going to load your own accounts. So make sure you are completely logged out if you have one, and then go ahead and click on this link right here. When I click on the link, I will get this pop-up uh, security verification. Just go ahead and click the uh, button right here that you're not a robot because you, of course, are not. Go ahead and click on that and then click on continue. When you do, you will have the advanced sample company open for you. Now let's go ahead and get started with reconciling the checking account. From the left navigation bar, we need to hover over transactions and then click on account, or I'm sorry, reconcile. Over here on the left-hand side is that transactions, hover over that and then click on reconcile. Now you'll note here that you will have a couple of screens, uh, welcome screens that are going to show because you're reconciling for the first time in the sample company. In a real life scenario, after reconciling for the first time, you're going to go directly to the reconcile screen. But if you ever want to see some of the information um, that QBO provides here, it's just um, giving you a little more information of what you're going to be doing with reconciling um, and what this area is all about. Go ahead and click on get started. You're going to get another one and go ahead and click on let's get reconciled. Now banks do not always send statements for all accounts on the same schedule. Since we are only have since we only have a checking account statement at this time, we will just be reconciling this account which should be already selected right here. Now the account field should show as checking as I mentioned and the beginning balance is always showing from the last time the uh, account was reconciled. That's this beginning balance right there. What we need to enter is from the statement the ending balance. So if we go back to the bank statement, we will see that the ending balance is $5,672.19. So let's go ahead and add that right here. 5672.19, there it is. 
in a real life scenario, we would enter the statement ending date. Now the dates in the sample company are always changing, so we're just going to be using today's date. And on the statement, it would have, a, this says period ending last month, um, we would have an actual date on the statement. That is what you would want to use in a real life scenario. We're just gonna use today's date, so just in the box, click into it and then type a lowercase t to have the ending date, which is defaulting to today's date, show up in the box. And then go ahead and click on Start Reconciling. And when you do, this will appear for you. If you happen to have any pop-ups, just go ahead and click out of them. QBO is just trying to be extra helpful. Now, before we move on to the actual reconciliation process, let's take a minute to review what you are looking at on the screen. So the beginning balance is the ending balance from the last time you reconciled. It cannot be changed. That is this 5,000 right here. We also saw that on the previous screen and pointed that out. Now the statement ending balance, which is right here, is the one that we just entered from, on, from the bank statement on that previous screen. It is right here, as well as that statement ending date that was also from the previous screen. Now let's say that you discover that you entered the um, ending balance or the statement ending balance incorrectly. You can always click on this edit info button right here to go ahead and change it. Next, we have all of the transactions and next to each transaction is a circle. There will be a blue check mark if the transaction has already been marked cleared, such as when we process the bank feeds. So once you find the transaction here on the bank statement as well and it matches, you would click on the circle right here to mark it as cleared and a blue check mark will show up. Now, as you are checking the uh, transactions here, the information, whether it's a payment or deposit, is going to move up into this area, the payments and deposits. Now, the cleared balance is the beginning balance minus the payments and deposits. Here is that cleared balance right here. Right now it's showing as 5,000 because it's 5,000 minus the payment deposit combination that will change right here. Now the difference right here is the statement ending balance right here minus the cleared balance right here. And the ultimate goal is to have it as a difference of zero. When you have it as a zero, you know that everything is matching up properly and that it has been reconciled completely. So as a bookkeeper, when you get it to that zero, it's very satisfying. Um, so that is the ultimate goal here. Now, one more thing to note is that transactions currently showing are only dated on or before the statement ending balance, or I'm sorry, ending date. If you turn off this filter by clicking on the X, that is right here, that X next to statement ending date, um, you can do this. Um, so if you have transactions that were added with an incorrect date, you, you can't find them basically. Um, these are often referred to as hidden or rogue transactions. So again, if you are finding transactions on the bank statement that are not showing up here, it might be a good idea to get rid of that filter just to see if maybe it was incorrectly added um, or it was if the date was incorrectly added. Um, just so you can see if you can find it. So in the remaining steps of this exercise, we are going to complete the reconciliation by checking off each of the transactions that match with the bank deposit until we get to a difference of zero. Now, if you happen to have any check marks that are already checked off here, uh, whether by accident um, or you know you had just started clicking around, make sure they are all unchecked at this point. You need none checked, so you can either uncheck them individually or just click this top one to check all and then un click it again to uncheck all. You wanna have a blank slate, basically. So since this statement lists checks first, we're going to start there. In order to make it easier to find them, we can filter the list to show only the checks. So to do this, we're gonna click on that filter icon and then in the transaction type field, select check. So the filter is right here, click on that to expand it. The transaction type right here is going to be check. So you may need to scroll a little bit and click on that. And then once you do, you can go ahead and click on the green apply button. Now we are only going to be seeing the checks for this, um, uh, that on this reconciliation screen. Let's go ahead and sort them by number. So in the reference number field, we're going to click uh, this 
to uh, default it. You may need to click it twice to make it showing from the large or smallest to largest. Um, so click it as many times as you need so that you have it in this particular order. Now we're going to click on the circle next to each check that we see on the statement. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here are all of the checks that are showing. There are a total of six. So it looks like we have uh, check number two for 1808. That is this one right here. Go ahead and click on that. Then we have check four for 5455. Check four, 5455. We have the next one, check number five for 6201. Let's go ahead and find that. Check five, 6201, click on that one. Check number 69 for $100. There's no check 69. There is this one for $100. So let's skip this one for the moment and continue on. We will come right back to it. Check number 70 for 185. Check 70, 185. There you go. Click on that. Then on check number 75, $228.75. 75, 228. Um, if I expanded my field, I would be able to, let me see if I can open this up a little bit more. And it's not letting me expand the payment, but I do know that this is the correct one. So go ahead and click on the circle as well. Now, while we were checking off all the checks, you may have noticed that the check number for Tony Renan Duo uh, was not listed. So since the check is for $100, we can reasonably serve or ascertain that it matches the check 69 on the statement. Sometimes the bank statement will include images of the check, so you can always double check this way as well. So if you are sure that the number is correct, you can easily add it to the QBO row. We're going to click anywhere on that line for Tony Randanuru, and then we are going to click in the reference number and type 69. So click anywhere on this line, not the circle, but anywhere on that line. We will see in the uh, reference number box. Um, it, I'm sorry, that's a memo. This is the reference number box right here. Go ahead and click into it and type 69. And then go ahead and click on the green save button. And when you do, you see now that it has been added to his check. We're going to click on save, or I'm sorry, we already did click on save. So now let's move on. You'll note that there are some other checks in here. I'm sorry, you need to click on the um, check box next to Tony, the one that we just added. So you'll note here that the check for books by Bessie right here has not cleared. Now it is not unusual for people to hold on to checks for a while without depositing them, but if we continue to see this a couple months in a row, we may want to let Craig know that uh, to check with Bessie about this. Also, this transaction here for squeaky clean car wash is a bit strange. Is it a check or a debit? We will have to research this. Um, for now, we're just going to continue with the reconciliation. Let's go ahead and click on the X next to check to clear this filter. That is this one right here. Go ahead and click on that so that we have all of the transactions showing again. Now this time, let's focus on the other payments that are coming out of the account. Sometimes it's helpful to sort these by amount. So let's go ahead and click on payment to sort the payments by amount. Go ahead and click on that. I'm going to, I have to click a little bit. Sorry, my screen with having the, um, with having both of these on the screen, my, my usual screen here is not expanded quite the same way that it usually is. So there is a little uh, finessing that I have to do in order to get it um, so that we can see everything. There we go, that's much better. All right, so you will notice that there are two squeaky clean car wash transactions for the same amount. Um, those are right here. What happened, it's likely that Craig visited the car wash two different days and it just cost the same amount each time. But for the purposes of this exercise, let's say that we realize we accidentally entered a duplicate. We can easily delete the incorrect one while reconciling, but we will do that in a minute. First, let's click on the circle for the squeaky clean car or cash expense and then use the statement to click on the circle for all the other ones that match. So here are the two uh, squeaky clean. It's this one right here. I don't know if I can expand this a little bit more. 
um, so that we can see. Yeah, there's two, one that says check and one that says cash expense. Let's click on the one that says cash expense, click on that circle. And now let's go through and do all of the rest of them on from the bank statement. So we have here um, one for $63.15 for Chin's gas. Um, since we have sorted this by payment, we can find that a little bit easier. Click on that particular one. Uh, $666 for Tim Phillip. $666, here it is. Go ahead and click on that. $114.09 for Pacific Gas. And here it is right there, $114.09. $89.09 for Tanya's Nursery, $89.09 right there. $250 for Hicks Hardware, Let's see Hicks right there, $250. Um, you see there's another $250 here, but you can tell that this one's for Hicks Hardware versus this one, which is for Robertson um, and Associates. So just know that as you are going through the bank statement, it's a great idea to look at the vendor um, that is on here in addition to the payment amount. Um, it, you would also look at dates too. Um, in the sample company, like we mentioned earlier in this video, the they are always changing dates. And so we don't have specific dates set up for the bank statement here to match with this because they're always changing. But know that in a real life scenario, you definitely want to use a couple of different ways to deduce which one you should be selecting. So let's continue on. We just did Hicks Hardware for $250. Tanya's Nursery, another one for $2350. Scroll up, $2350 for Tanya's. Uh, let's see here, another one for Hicks Hardware for $24.36. That's the next one right there. $19.99 for Squeaky Clean Car Wash. That was the one that we already had selected, so we are going to um, move on to the next one. $5.66 for Bob's Burger Joint. Let's see, that should be towards the top. There it is, $5.66. $52.14 for Chin's Gas. $52.14, there it is. $75 to Pam Sites. Let's find that one, 75 Pam Sites. Once again, this is another example, two payments for $75. Um, and then knowing that the one, um, this one was for Pam Sites because of the bank detail and knowing that this is the correct one because her name is right there in payee field. Couple more we have uh, for Hicks Hardware, $215.66. So 21566, there it is. And then Tanya's Nursery for $46.98. So let's scroll back up here. $46.98, there it is. And we have done all of the payments at this point. Now that all the expenses are accounted for, we can delete the extra squeaky clean car wash. Um, uh, transaction, note that we would choose to void it in, or that we could choose to void it, excuse me, instead so that there is an audit trail. But if you are the one that entered it in the first place and you realize it's a mistake, it's okay to delete it. So on that debit line, we need to click on squeaky clean car wash, click on edit, and then move from there. So let's find that other one. Go ahead and click anywhere on that line, not the circle, but anywhere on the line. Click on edit. Then we are going to click on more when it pops up, which is right here on the black uh, line here. Go ahead and click on delete. You will get a pop-up message that says, are you sure you wanna delete this? And the answer is yes. So click on the green yes button. And when you do, that one has now disappeared. It is no longer showing. It's just the one squeaky clean car wash transaction. Finally, let's look at the deposits for this account. Again, sometimes sorting them makes it a little bit easier. This time we're going to click on deposit to show the deposits at the top, um, at the top sorted by amounts. So let's go ahead and click on deposit here. I need to figure out how to, there we go. Uh, let me see if I can expand this a little bit so that we can see, no, I did it the wrong way. Let's do it this way. There we go. Now we can see all of the deposit amounts right there. 
So we're going to click on the circle next to each deposit that matches the statement. So let's go ahead and do that. That is this section down here. The first one is for $175, a deposit check. 175 right there. $225, Kate Whalen. 225 right there and it looks like it has moved over. Sorry, give me one moment. Let me expand these all so that we have a lot more. There we go. So it's much easier to see everything. Um, another deposit check for $105 right there. Another check for $694. $694 right there. Uh, $337.50 is the next one right there. As you can see, as we're making these clicks, the difference is changing. It is slowly making its way down to zero at this point. Um, so we are just gonna keep working until we get to there. Um, $868.15 is the next one right there. $408 is in there as well. 408. We are almost done. We have a $50 deposit for Freeman. $50 Freeman right there. Oops. And then we have one more for Travis Walden for $103.55. That's Travis right there, 103.55. We click on that. And when you do, you will see now our difference is at zero. This is perfect. This means that everything has been reconciled properly. So now we are simply going to click on the finish now button right there. And when you do, you will see this pop up appear. We want to click on done, but just as a note here in a real life scenario, you have the opportunity to attach a statement. At this point, there will be a button that says attach statement. I um, always recommend doing it. It never hurts to have that documentation in QBO. So you have that option in real life in the sample company, they don't have that. So just go ahead and click on the green done button. And there you go, you have now reconciled the checking accounts. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just go ahead and click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the advanced sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise in the cool down section where we practice running visual reports for Craig. And I will see you in the next video.